Let f of x equal 1 over x. Find a number c such that the average rate of change of the function f on the interval 1 comma c is negative 1 fourth. All right. So first what I'd like to do is just graph this function. All right. You might not be allowed to, but, you know, and when you're calculating it, maybe on the test or whatnot, but um, it's definitely best when you're learning it to try to get a visual uh, representation of these functions. So what I would do is just draw a little axis here. You can throw that into the calculator. And I, I, some of you might be saying, well, wait a minute, how do I throw f of x in? I don't have that button. Remember, you can always just call this y. And that's actually what I'm going to do for this problem. All right. So we're going to take the function f of x equals 1 over x. And I'm just going to call this now y is equal to 1 over x. We're saying the same thing, right? This is the input of the function. This is the output. They are two different variables. So instead of calling it f of x, I'm just going to call it y. So now what we could do, throw that into the calculator and graph it. And what we should do and what we should uh, achieve or get in the calculator is a graph that might look something like this. All right, something like this. All right. Now, they want us to find the average rate of change. Okay, as soon as I hear those words, average rate of change, I think, oh, slope. Slope of a line that connects two points on the graph. Right? I have written that down here. All right, you have to memorize that. That the average rate of change is the slope of basically a secant line that connects two points on the graph. All right? So now what they're saying is that we want to find that average rate of change for this interval where x is going to equal 1 and then x is going to equal c, right? That's the confusing part. So let's first deal with, let's find the point where x is 1. So you go to your graph over here, you start at the origin, you move over one spot, right? One unit to here. And then you scroll up to the graph and we're going to say about, let's say about here represents the point. Okay. Now this point, I'm going to draw a straight line down. Let's say that represents x when x is 1. Okay. Now this graph is not to scale, by the way, as you probably will see in a second. But just bear with me. That, that's x. Uh, that's the point at x equals 1. All right. Now this point has a corresponding y value to it, right? It has a corresponding y. So I'll put that in black here. Now what's this y value? How can you find it? Well, if you know what x is, then you also know what y is. Why? Because you have y, 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 right? Y, y. <laughs> you have this function over here. And you know that if you know what x is, you can find out what y is. So this is fairly straightforward, right? If x is 1, what's y? It's also 1, OK? And as you can see now, this is not really to scale, all right? These, you see how this distance is a lot greater than that, all right? But in any case, uh, so we have that point. Now, that's one point, and we're getting close. So now remember, we just have to find the average rate of change, which is a slope between two points on the graph. So we found one of them. Now we've got to find the next one. Now, this is the confusing part. The next point has an x value of c. What in the world does that even mean? Well, that means we don't know it. That's what we're trying to find. OK, we'll back up one step. Let's go back to what the slope of it actually is. They said that the average rate of change, I'll call it arc, is equal to 1 fourth. That's what they told us, negative 1 fourth. Excuse me. Now, that tells you something. The slope is negative, right? The slope is negative. So if this is the first point, then the second point has to lie somewhere to the right of that point. Because any point now that I make, let's call it this point, or let's call it that point, or let's call it this point, no matter what point I make, I know that the slope here will be negative, right? So I know c is going to be somewhere to the right of that x value. OK, so let me just put it right here for now, since I drew it there. So let me draw a little line down here, and let's say that that's c. OK, now that x value has a corresponding y value to it, right? Now, we don't know what it is, but that doesn't really prevent us from labeling it on our graph. Remember, if you know what x is, and in this case, we're just calling x c, if you know what that is, according then to this function, if you know what x is, you can find out what y is. 
right? So all we have to do is say, well, y would then equal one over c. And that's it, that's all we can do. We know that this is what y is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug that in, one over c, okay? Now, look what we just did. We have two points. Now it's not satisfactory, right? Because we, we have a variable in here. And you might say, well, how do I solve this now? Don't worry about that. Let's just try to put it into a formula and then see, okay? Don't stop at this stage, keep going, all right? Because maybe once you set it up in an equation, you'll say, oh my goodness, I can solve it. So let's just detail these two points specifically, okay? The first point up here has an X value of one and a Y value of one. So we'll call this X one, y1, and that had a value of one and one, right? And then our second point here, it we'll call that x2, y2, that has an x value of c, as we mentioned, and then the y value is one over c. Okay, so now, we know the average rate of change is the slope, and we have now two points. Alarm bells should be going off. What's the formula that relates these variables? What's the slope formula, right? It's the slope formula. It's m equals, which is slope, m is equal to change in y over change in x. So the slope here will be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And now what we realize is we can plug some stuff in, right? I know what the slope is. That is the same thing as the average rate of change, okay? negative one fourth, that's gonna then be equal to my y2 value, which we said was one over c, minus then the y1 value, which is one, divided now by my x2 value, which is c, minus then my x1 value, which is one. And look guys, one equation, one unknown. I'm doing my little happy dance because I know I can solve this, right? Whenever you have an equation with one unknown, we can solve it. The concept behind this problem is over. It's now algebra. That's it. Literally, the, the concept is done. Average rate of change, all this stuff, functions, blah, blah, blah. It's so finished. I know I can solve this now. So my mind changes, right? I'm not thinking, I'm thinking about how do I solve this now in terms of algebra. And that's what we're going to do next. I want to make one note, though. And... You might see in the textbooks or your professor's giving this equation, which by the way, it's technically correct. I'm not using it because I, I think it's easier to view using our slope formula, but let me just make this, um, let me make this comparison for you, all right? You might see this, that the arc or the average rate of change is equal to F of B minus F of A all over B minus A. This formula right here is the same thing, I'm just using different letters, as what I wrote over here. It's the same thing. Okay, look, right, compare them. I like to use this one, why? Because we've been using this probably for years, right? If you think back to high school math, or even if you're in high school right now, you've been seeing this all the time, right? For years now, this is new, so it feels a little unfamiliar. This is technically correct for this problem, although I'm going to view it this way because I think it's easier and I'm relating it to something you already know. Okay, but just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna leave this formula up and I'm just going to put it on over here and just remember that it is the same thing and I'll put this in a box, it's the same thing as this. All right, now back to the algebra. We gotta solve this thing. Now there's many ways to solve this, okay? So I'm gonna employ one strategy here. There might be another way you might like to do it. That'd be great. Actually, what you should do, understand the way I do it, and then try to figure out a different way to do it. All right, the more ways you know how to solve the problems, the better you'll be at doing the algebra. So what I'm gonna do first is, you know, I, I'm already recognizing a pattern here just from prior experience that I have my C minus one here, and I have like, it, this almost looks like C minus one, right? It says one over C minus one. So basically, these looking so similar, I'm gonna to try to find this binomial in here. That's my goal, all right? So I have to do a little algebraic manipulation. What I'm gonna do first is I want to, I'm gonna combine these two together, all right? So how do I do that? Well, I need a common denominator. So basically, I have to take the one over here and then multiply it by C over C, right? When we do that, what do we, what do we get? So we get this, one over four, equals then one 
over C minus C over C, and this is all over then C minus one. Okay, now I'm gonna combine this fraction on the top. All right, I'm gonna combine the fraction because the denominators here are the same. So now what it will look like, and let me draw like little lines here so we can subdivide the work. So now what we have is we have negative one fourth will equal then one minus C over C divided then by C minus one. Okay, now I realize I have a complex fraction here, meaning I have a fraction basically within a fraction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to get it to one nice fraction, and I know I can do that by taking the numerator fraction and multiplying it by the reciprocal of the denominator. So all we have to do is put this denominator over one, and we'll be able to see that fraction down there. So remember, I'm gonna now do one over four is gonna be equal to one minus C over C times the reciprocal of the denominator. So just flip this bad boy. All right, so it becomes one over C minus one. All right, now look, we're very, very close here, right? We're very, very close to finding now a, a uh, common uh, factor here. I just noticed that the signs are messed up, meaning the C is positive here and the C is negative here. The one is negative here and the one is positive here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to negate this. Okay, meaning I'm going to multiply it by a negative sign, or a negative one, not a negative sign, negative one, technically, right? So let's do that. So let me just grab a little more space here, one second. I might just move this, you know what, I'm gonna move this arc formula right over here for now, okay? All right, so now take a look at what happens. So this is now negative one-fourth will equal, uh, this will now be negative, Okay, and I'm just actually, all we have to do then is actually just flip these two spots. Okay, meaning I'm gonna write now C minus one. Why does that work? Well, think about it. Negative times a positive C is what? A negative C. And look, that's a negative C. A negative multiplied then by a negative one would be a positive one. And look, that's what it is over here. So hopefully you see that they are the same. So now this will become divided by C, multiplied now by one over C minus one, and look, look, beautiful, 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 look at these two things, they're the same. So guess what? Toodaloo! Bye-bye. Now it becomes nice and easy. So this is one fourth now, will equal negative one over C. I realize that both of these things are negative, so just to make my life easier, I'm gonna cancel those signs, all right? Meaning just literally erase them because the negative cancels the negative. And now all I gotta do is solve for C, right? So you might have a couple ways, just do a cross multiplication, right? So it's one times C is C, and the four times one is four. So lo and behold, we have C is equal to four. And voila, there it is. And now hopefully this should make sense, right? Uh, here we found C, and here is C on our graph, right? So this C now is, we know the answer, it's four. Remember, we said that this point should lie to the right of this point. Well, it's not a point, the x value, I'm saying. So it does, right? Four is further to the right than one. And now if I know what the x value is here, I also know what the y value is. This would now just be one over four or 0.25. So basically what we found is the x value, which according to this point, would give us a slope of the secant line that connects those two points of negative one fourth. All right, so a couple of hard parts in this problem. One, it's the concept, and two, the algebra. But they're two different thought processes, all right? So hopefully though, both make sense, all right? And I appreciate you guys viewing the video. If this video helped, tell your friends. That'd be the best way to help us out too. All right. And we'd appreciate it so, so very much. And we appreciate you. Thank you very much.